What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's your boy, Brendan Jamar. I just want to start off by saying Happy New Year to everyone that's viewing this video. Whatever time this video lands with you, it could be during the daytime, it could be at night, or it could be some days down the line, but I just want to appreciate you for stopping by my channel, checking out this video. <music> So in today's video, I just want to talk about hacks that you could necessarily use for college life. Whether you are currently in college right now or you're looking to go to college down the line in the future, I think these tips that I'm going to be giving off will be greatly appreciated in the long run. So for everyone that's viewing this video, if you aren't familiar with me, my name is Brendan Jamar. I am a YouTuber. I am a grad student right now, currently at the University of Louisiana at Monroe. I'm studying gerontology, grief care management, and in the future, I plan on doing hospice and family therapy. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification icon down below to be notified whenever I upload videos. I'm going to try to be more consistent with my videos. I understand I've been getting a lot of feedback on people thinking that I should upload more than what I do. And I really appreciate that because a lot of people really enjoy the videos that I have posted. So with that being said, this year, I'm going to try to be more consistent as my schedule has freed up somewhat. So we're going to get right into this video. So the first tip here on my list is for you to get familiar with your schedule. Getting familiar with your schedule will help you out and it will help you plan on later down in the future for other things that you open yourself up to do. So when I say get familiar with your schedule, knowing what time your class starts, knowing how long your class is, knowing what building it's in, making sure you know how much time you have to leave one class if you wanna make a stop, get you something to eat, get to the next class. Now, getting familiar with your schedule can be quite difficult for the first you know, few weeks of class because it's like, I'm trying to get my mind together on where I have to go, what I have to do, what time it starts, what time it ends. So my first tip would be, when you register for your classes, think about what time you wanna go, what time you wanna end. Think about the workload that you wanna put yourself on. Just to be mindful here, for anybody that hasn't been to college and you're getting ready to go to college in the fall as a freshman, or you're currently enrolled in college right now in the spring semester, do not put yourself under a lot of pressure. Don't put yourself under a lot of stress Gradually let yourself just get comfortable with being in college. College is not like high school at all. College is very independent. You are responsible for your work. You're responsible for coming to class. You're responsible for talking to your professors. You are essentially responsible for everything that you do because you're paying your own money here. Well, some people are paying money and some people aren't. But just really just think about it. Like You're on your own. You are an adult when you come to college. So just think about your schedule. Think about how much time you want to give yourself. Plan it all out. Okay, so the next tip on my list here is to build a relationship with your professor and your peers. A lot of people don't think about the importance of the relationship that you build with your professor in the long run. Your professors are there to help you. Mind you not, you're going to get some professors that really don't care that much about you and they just are there to teach the course, get through the semester. Initially coming into college, I had good relationships with like my high school professors, but when I got to college, it was different. In college, you have to, you know, send out emails. You have to let them know, hey, my name is this. This is my student number. I'm currently taking this class with this section. So within you building that relationship with your professor, whether it's via email, office hours, you are really essentially building that relationship to help you in the long run in your class. I learned that the hard way coming later towards my college years of undergrad because I really didn't think that my professors would really help me out as much as they would. So with the professors, take the time out. If you're not understanding something, that's exactly what they're there for. They are there to help you with the material as much as they can. Go to the office hours when they offer them. Look at the syllabus when they say, I'm here during this time. I'll respond to emails better during this time. If you need any questions, come to me during this time. Those relationships are so important because at the end of the semester, they may just help you curve your grade. If you're down two points and you need to be at a B, they'll curve you up. If you're down, you need to be at an A, they'll curve you up. 
don't worry about the noise in the back. That's really getting on my nerve already. But build that relationship with them because in the long run, they're gonna be able to help you when you need letters of recommendation for if you're going to grad school, letters of recommendations for jobs that you may be needing. Those relationships are important. I say build a relationship with the students around you. You, nine times out of 10, will be seeing these kids throughout the semester. Y'all all are gonna be taking tests together. Y'all all are going to want to pass the class. At first, you know, you might not know anybody. A lot of people aren't the friendly type to initially start a conversation with people. I know when I got to college, I really didn't know how to socialize and be friends right off bat with people in my class because I like to get a feel for people before I just make the move and be like, hey, do you want to study and stuff like that? The first day, you know, get a feel for the class, understand what the professor wants from you, understand what the class is going to be. And when the material starts being presented to yourself, you know, if the person that's to your left or the person that's to your right, just be like, hey, you know, do you want to get together and study? You know, do you want to get together? You know, want to go over the notes, you know, whenever you're free, build those relationships with that student, even if it's just going to be for that semester. Build these relationships with these people because you have something that you want to get done. And that's to pass the class. It doesn't matter whether it's the easiest class in there. To you, it might be easy but to them, they might be struggling. And something that you pick up on easily can help them and vice versa. Third tip that I have, take notes. Take notes. I know a lot of people feel like they don't have to take notes. They can retain information. For me, I had to take notes. When I was doing bio pre-med and when I was doing pre-nursing, it was essential that I took notes because we covered so much material that the notes that they were provided for us sometimes they would already be like printouts or they would just be material that the teacher would give us right before class started so i would take extra notes under those for me i learned the hard way i understood the material that was going on in my science classes and stuff like that but wasn't working for me when it came time to the exams because the professors wanted you to understand the material and how if something else were to happen or any other element was to come into play, you would know what reaction happened or how this will work with that. So take notes. Notes are very important. And something that I feel like is very important, handwritten notes. As much as people, you know, like to type on their computers, type up notes, or just look at the lecture notes that the teachers already give, I find that going back and rewriting your notes is better for you to remember because you're writing it down not only, and you're looking at it as you're writing it, so it's processing in your mind. But looking at something in your own handwriting will be beneficial because it's your handwriting. You understand it when you read it back, when you're writing it out. So it's processing in your mind better than when you're sitting in an hour and 15 long lecture class and the teachers are just reading through the slides. So with your notes, keep your notes, use your notes. With your peers that you get familiar with when y'all have study sessions, use your notes, compare your notes to theirs. Look at what you don't have compared to what you do have. That's how you're gonna pass your classes, especially in science classes, because a lot of people aren't good when it comes to biologies, chemistries. That's okay. You'll get better down the line of study habits. The people that you become familiar with, they introduce you to different ways of studying that you can use in the future, whether you find them useful or not. You see how some people like to study and you see how others like to study. When you get to college, you pick up new ways of studying because Everything that you did in high school, how you studied in high school is always going to change from how you study in college. It's never going to be the same. The next tip here on my list is for you to get a planner. I was very against using a planner when people first talked about it. I said, I didn't need to use a planner. I know how to remember stuff. I know when my due dates are. And, you know, essentially because I am such a workaholic and I'm very ambitious, I really remember when stuff is due. I like to get stuff done ahead of time. With a planner, it lessened the workload on me because I was able to map out directly when certain things were due, when exams were. So I prepared myself and I gave myself enough time to study. I gave myself enough time to complete my work. Another reason why I say planners are essential. Whenever you're in college and you decide to branch off and you wanna join clubs, you wanna be a part of Greek life, a planner is necessary because it helps you look at, okay, this is the day 
we're going to be doing these activities. This is what day we're going to be doing these events. So with that planner, it helps you plan out everything. You have maybe at 8 o'clock, you have a class. And at 1030, y'all have an event going on. So you can check your planner to see, okay, if I have a class at 8, event at 1030, and I have a class at 1130, I have enough time to be at that event for a little bit, give me something to eat and make it to class. I'm still using a planner now. I found out that planners make my world go around because all that work that I had to do, especially in the fall semester, and now it kept me grinded because working a full-time job and then being a full-time student, I didn't have that much time. So I would look to see when I had, I would look to see when I had any kind of work to do. And so from there, I would prepare myself like, okay, this week I have four assignments due. So I'm gonna start today on one of the assignments that's the easiest. I'm gonna knock those out and then working my way down to when the hardest assignment is due, I'm gonna prepare myself enough time to get that out the way. Utilize your planners, utilize them. If not, you're gonna be behind. You're gonna be wishing that you used one. You're gonna wish you had more time. Use them. And so the next tip that I have is to utilize these two websites that I'm gonna tell you about. Utilize Grammarly and utilize Quizlet. Grammarly is a great website to use that's gonna proofread your papers, let you know any grammatical errors that you might not have caught after you finish writing your papers. For me, I got hundreds on all of my papers when I started using Grammarly. It helped me out tremendously. With my papers, I never really realized how much in my papers, the slang that I used is just so natural to me. So when it comes to correct English, you know, my papers will be outstanding. You know, I might've had a few grammatical errors, you know, low A's, B's, but when I started using Grammarly, Grammarly really improved the score of my papers. Last semester of undergrad, I got all hundreds on my papers. And it wasn't just necessarily because I'm just that good of a paper writer. Sure, all the information that I had in my papers were correct. I made sure the sources that I used were college approved because a lot of professors prefer for you to use educational scholarly websites such as you know edu.gov they typically don't care about websites that's .com .org they really want you to utilize like the library database so you can have correct sources and with grammarly it just improved the overall quality of my paper i'm not saying with grammarly you're going to always get A's on your paper because your paper is due based off the information that you give and how well that you write it. But Grammarly is another exceptional tool to use. So use Grammarly because if not, I'm not saying that your papers won't get you an A, but your papers might not get you an A. The next website that I have is for you to use Quizlet. Quizlet helped me out tremendously, especially with my biology classes. That's all I can say. Quizlet gave me study guides that students made previously, study guides that people are currently using now, and it was a way for kids in the class that networked with each other to share their various study guides that they use once time got closer towards the exam. When I tell y'all from AMP 1 and 2, AMP Lab, Micro, Micro Lab, Patho, uh, Chemistry, Nursing Concepts, Pharmacology, I used Quizlet for all of that. Now, did I pass all my tests? No, I didn't. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all. If I could go back to my freshman year of college and change a lot of ways that I studied and prepared, I probably would be in a nursing program right now or I'd be getting ready to graduate from nursing school. I probably would still be by your pre-med. I'm giving y'all direct access to how you can improve your study tips and what's gonna help you. Quizlet is an amazing app. And it's not just necessarily for studying. If you know, you know. <laughs> I'm serious, y'all. If you know about Quizlet, Course Hero, um, I think it was called Quick Blue. All of those helped me a lot. I'm not gonna go into how they helped me. You just got to find out on your own. Make sure you remember to use Grammarly. Even if you feel like you can write a paper and you have no problems with writing a paper, Use Grammarly anyway. It's gonna always check for grammatical errors. It's always gonna help you improve. And on the side, it's gonna show you where the overall score of what they feel like your paper is, the excitement, 
how much attention that they got in your paper. So just think about using that, especially when you have to write longer papers such as five to seven pages, 12 to 15 page papers. Grammarly will be amazing. My throat got dry talking to y'all, I'm sorry. Okay, so the last tip that I have is take breaks. Take those breaks as needed. You will feel so bogged down and under pressure that you don't realize how much stress you're putting yourself under in college. Don't stress yourself out. I'm not saying that college is not full of stress because college is a very stressful four to six years for some people, especially undergrad. You take so many different courses, Sometimes you might have to repeat a course or two and you just feel stressed and overwhelmed. Do not let college stress you out and overwhelm you. I know a lot of people, including myself, I feel like if I have a test coming up and I'm under stress, I'm just gonna push through it. But a lot of people, if it's a party coming up and you wanna give yourself a break and you've been studying for like four days straight, give yourself that day. Just say, I'm not gonna study anything. I'm not gonna pick my books up. I'm not gonna focus on class. Go to class, but what I'm saying, not focus on class as in, I'm not gonna focus on doing it, any type of studying. Give yourself that day, whether it's going to your favorite restaurant, going to get a manicure, a pedicure, watching YouTube videos, or just hanging out with your friends on campus. Give yourself that time because you deserve that time. If I don't study, then I'm not gonna pass. That's not always the case. Study, but give yourself the break. I found myself under a lot of stress while I was doing pre-nursing because I was taking multiple sciences. I was taking a chemistry, a micro, and a patho class all in one same semester while being chapter president for my fraternity. So I was just bouncing back and forth between class, fraternity work, class, fraternity work, and I didn't give myself the time that I needed. So give yourself that break. Don't feel bad about it. Just know that next day, pick right back up on your studies. Do what you have to do, because if not, you're gonna constantly be bogged down. Your brain's gonna be tired. You're gonna be tired. And your best performance comes when you're energized. Tess, you really need to go in there with a clear mind. If you're going in there while you're stressed, you're gonna overthink your questions. You're gonna miss your questions. And then you're gonna come to other questions that look familiar to the question that you just missed. So you're gonna go back and put the wrong answer for that next question. When you're not stressed out, everything's gonna make sense. What one question says, which I don't realize, it coincides with another question down the line. And if I could go back, your boy be in scrubs. And I'm not saying I would be in scrubs at the plasma lab. I would be in scrubs at kitty degree nurse. I still feel accomplished with everything that I did. And I have no regrets. So I hope these tips that I gave y'all were very useful. I hope they help y'all out in the long run. I really hope that you take the advice that I've given y'all and use them for yourself. Send this video to your friends. You never know how they might need it. Your younger family members that's getting ready to start college. Hell, even if your mama get ready to go back to college and she in her 40, she might need this video. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope that you check out Grammarly, like I said. Make sure you use Quizlet if you already don't. Get you a planner. The semester just started. Get the planner. The semester just started. Build a relationship with your professor. It's gonna take time. Don't go in there talking to them like y'all been friends for 10 years, five years. Like, Build that relationship, but still stay professional. With the students in your class, just start off mingling small talk. You ain't got to be all in their face. Because I know for me, if somebody came in class and they was all in my face, I'd be like, you need to back the fuck up because... Mm -hmm. But... <laughs> Just utilize these tips that I've given y'all and I hope y'all have a safe semester. I hope you have a great time, even though this quarantine is really limiting colleges from doing any type of activity, spring breaks, you know, spring flings, all that type of stuff. So with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this video and y'all nice one and just catch me on the next video.